Um, I apologize in advance because I will not have enough time uh, to read out loud the uh, quotations from the slides, so please uh, attract your attention to the presentation. <coughs> Um, in a recent article on transborder membership uh, politics, Rogers Brubaker and Jian Kim underscored that while the emerging literature on the subject deals with the ways in which nation state seeks to establish a sustained ties with emigrants and uh, transborder co-ethnics, yet researchers have tended to take the existence of such populations for granted and have not looked at social and political problems processes through which states identify some transborder populations as their own. Uh, building on these ideas, in my research on Armenian uh, transborder nationalism, I address a related question. I examine the effort aimed at dissemination of a particular definition of the Armenian nation produced by the putative homeland among Armenians living outside of Armenia's borders. Promotion of the official understanding of Armenianness is closely linked to the goal of strengthening loyalties towards Armenia and extracting economic, political, and other obligations from Armenian communities. I argue that in the recent years, Armenia has been actively engaged in construction of diaspora identity among Armenians in the post-Soviet space, and look at how these efforts are received by Armenians living outside Armenia's borders. To investigate these recent developments, I chose the Armenian community of Belisi as a case study because Armenian population has a particularly long history in that city. Uh, this case is of particular interest because Armenians in Belisi demonstrate great linguistic and confessional plurality. Uh, the presentation is based on a qualitative anthropological study conducted in Belisi in 2015-2016. Throughout the Soviet period, the definition of Armenian diaspora did not include those Armenians who lived within the Soviet Union, but outside of the Soviet Republic of Armenia. According to the Armenian anthropologist Levan Abrahamian, the terms Purk, the Armenian equivalent of the Greek word diaspora, was used by Armenian scholars mostly in reference to that part of diaspora that was formed as a result of the uh, genocide of 1915. Uh, nor did Armenians in Soviet republics consider themselves diaspora, largely because they viewed the entire Soviet Union as their homeland. After the breakup of the Soviet Union, when the new borders were established uh, by the independent states, the Armenians found themselves divided by them from the Republic of Armenia. To refer to this condition of mismatch between cultural and political boundaries, when people are left outside of their own national territory, attached by formal citizenship to one state and by ethnic uh, cultural affinity to another, Rogers Brubaker has coined uh, a term accidental diaspora. Thus, accidental diasporas are created by movement of borders rather than by movement of people over these borders. Uh, the history of the Armenians uh, in post-Soviet Georgia fits into the framework described above. Though uh, Probaker himself treats diaspora not as an entity but as an idiom, stance, and claim, criticizing the essentialist concept of diaspora, Martin Sockefeld uh, relies on concept, uh, concepts developed uh, in social. Um, last two minutes? No, no. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so criticizing the essentialist concept of diaspora, Martin Sockfeld rely, uh, relies on concepts developed uh, in social movement theory to analyze the formation of diaspora through ethnic mobilization. He underscores uh, that despite the fact that identities are often essentialized in political contexts, such essentialized uh, constructions do not have to be taken at face value by the researcher. Uh, identities become politically effective only when uh, they are accepted and supported by a certain number of people. Thus, when conducting research on diaspora as a political project, a researcher should ask by whom and how diaspora identity is mobilized. Diaspora discourse can, uh, can be produced both by those who see themselves as a part of this tra uh, transnational imagined community and by those who speak uh, in their name. Some actors are fully engaged in the process of uh, discursive and social construction. Others may uh, passively take the image of the community or offer an alternative uh, vision, 
while a part of those who have been included in the diaspora project may uh, actively distance themselves from it. Thus, in my research, I treat the model of accidental diaspora as a macro-political context that creates an opportunity for a diaspora project to develop. Still, to speak of construction uh, of diaspora identity among the Armenians in Tbilisi, we have to turn to microanalysis of everyday interaction, new discourses and practices disseminated by various ethnic institutions and activists, and uh, the spectrum of reactions uh, which uh, these new developments provoke among the Armenians in Tbilisi. First of all, let's take a look at the history and present of the Armenian population in Tbilisi. Historians suggest that uh, the Armenians have lived in Tbilisi since the early Middle Ages. At the beginning of the 19th century, uh, the Armenians constituted uh, a majority of the city's population. Uh, the percentage of uh, the Armenian population uh, was dropping ever since. This process intensified in the first years of Georgia's independence, and at the moment, uh, the there are about 50,000 uh, Armenians in the city. Um, so uh, the Armenian population of Belize is not hom uh, homogenous in terms of migration history. Uh, research participants themselves identify uh, two large groups, uh, so-called old Belizeans or and uh, descendants of uh, um, the survivors of the Armenian genocide. But uh, still, even taking uh, this distinction into consideration, the last sizable wave of Armenian migration to Tbilisi took place 100 years ago, when uh, Tbilisi was still a part of the Russian Empire. Uh, naturally, the Armenians in Tbilisi, including descendants of the genocide survivors, do not see themselves as immigrants. Uh, after Georgia's independence, Armenians in Tbilisi found themselves in a rapid nationalizing state. Since then, the process of renegotiation of the Armenian, uh, Armenian status in Georgia involving the Georgian state, the Armenian minority, and the Armenian state has begun. Armenians in Tbilisi belong to various religious denom uh, denominations. The largest group constitutes uh, the parish of the Armenian Apostolic Church. The parish of the Armenian Catholic Church is much smaller uh, and, according uh, to the priest, consists of about 100 uh, people. Uh, there's also a small Armenian evangelical community of uh, a few dozens of people. Armenians lived in Tbilisi for centuries and experienced a strong Georgian influence. At the moment, a significant number of Armenians uh, belongs to the Georgian Orthodox Church. Armenians uh, can also be found uh, among the parishioners of the uh, Latin Catholic Church and various Protestant churches. In terms of language, uh, most Armenians are to some extent multilingual in Armenian, Russian, and Georgian. In an attempt to compensate for their non titular status in the Georgian Soviet Republic, large numbers of Armenians used to pursue education in Russian, uh, though secondary education in Armenian was always available uh, throughout the Soviet period. Curiously, this trend uh, preserved after the breakup of the Soviet Union. As a result, uh, great numbers of local Armenians are illiterate in Armenian uh, and some uh, cannot even speak the language fluently. For various reasons, uh, to this day most Armenians in Tbilisi do not commonly refer to themselves as diaspora and even refute this definition. Uh, in this part of the presentation, I would like to analyze how diaspora identity is being promoted among Tbilisi Armenians, both through initiatives coming from Armenia and by local actors. Uh, while Armenia's diaspora policy, due to a number of factors, was rather passive in the 1990s, since then Armenia has begun to treat diaspora management uh, as, uh, as a priority. Uh, the most prominent uh, institutionalization efforts undertaken by Armenia in this sphere included organization of uh, Armenia diaspora conferences and creation of a specific ministry of diaspora in 2008. Uh, the ministry advocates for, pro for protection of Armenianness uh, among the members of the diaspora. It is uh, particularly stressed on the website of the ministry that its goals is the establishment and radicalization of Armenian identity among Armenians uh, who speak foreign languages and have foreign beliefs. Uh, so uh, the Armenian state views the Armenian language and belonging to the Armenian Apostolic Church as the main markers of national identity. Uh, its second goal is to harness and utilize the potential of diaspora which can be used for Armenia's development. 
one of the projects of the ministry that is supposed to actively promote its views among Armenians uh, in different countries is a program called Aritun, uh, through which uh, birthright journeys are organized uh, for young Armenians all over the world. Uh, though the program has uh, received much criticism in the Armenian press and its effectiveness can be questioned, it does have a certain influence on the young Armenians in Belize and contributes to construction of diaspora identity. Um, while the Ministry of Diaspora claims to collaborate uh, with all Armenian organizations in any country on equal terms, uh, interviews with uh, its staff members as well as with representatives of different religious and secular Armenian organizations in Belize uh, reveal uh, that this institution maintains a closer relationship with the Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church in Georgia and the Cultural Center Hiratun established by the Diocese in uh, 2011. Unofficially, those two organizations are viewed by the staff of the Ministry of Diaspora as legitimate representatives of Armenia in Belize. I would like to have a closer look at the activities of these organizations because it is through their uh, effort that the perception of Armenians in Belize as diaspora is being promoted. The role of the Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church in Georgia is somehow ambivalent. Um, on the one hand, it is a branch of the Armenian Apostolic Church with the mother see of uh, Holy Museum at its center. On the other hand, the diocese tries to appear as a separate entity in the eyes of the Georgian society to avoid accusations of being an agent of Armenia. Though uh, the connection between Apostolic Church and Armenia is unquestioned by local Armenians. Uh, one of the, the research participants, uh, a Franklin churchgoer, referred to Armenian Church as uh, a sort of cultural embassy. Uh, indeed, the Armenian Apostolic Church uh, views its mission as going far beyond religious ma uh, matters. On the screen you can see uh, a quote uh, from an interview with a priest uh, which serves as an illustration of this point. Uh, it is important to underscore that representatives of other denominations, including Armenian Catholic Church and Armenian Evangelical Church, as well as many Armenians who do not associate themselves with the religion, uh, challenge uh, the claim of the Armenian Apostolic Church to the role uh, as the leading ethnic institution representing all Armenians in Belize. Uh, during sermons and weekly uh, spirituality classes, the issues of preservation of Armenianness are addressed among uh, um, almost uh, as uh, often as religious topics. Uh, remarkably, uh, members of the clergy constantly underscore that Armenians in Belize live in a foreign country where uh, the Armenian identity is in danger. Uh, more importantly, besides cultural matters, uh, the priests draw uh, the attention of the parishioners to pressing issues facing Armenia, uh, urging them to remain loyal to the homeland and uh, provide assistance in the time of need. This trend was particularly visible during the Karbakh crisis of April 2016. Uh, the workers of the Church Adjacent Cultural Center turned to visitors and students with the same appeal um, can I have two, like two more minutes of that? Thank you. Um, so the workers of the Church Adjacent uh, Cultural Center turned to uh, visitors and students uh, with the same appeal. Those attending classes and cultural events uh, were frequently reminded of the ongoing battles on the borders uh, of Karbakh and uh, encouraged to make a contribution for the needs of those fighting. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm wrapping up. So, uh, in the recent years, uh, a number of uh, initiatives uh, have been taken by the Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church to mobilize Armenians in Belize. Uh, this uh, included changes to the religious calendar. Uh, traditionally, Armenians in Belize um, followed the uh, Julian calendar as the um, Georgian um, Orthodox Church, but several years ago uh, the priest changed it to uh, follow the Gregorian uh, calendar and uh, they stress that the uh, purpose of this was a uh, symbolic uh, reconnecting with the uh, Holy Miedzing, but also uncoupling the religious feasts of the Armenian Apostolic Church from those of the Georgian Orthodox Church. Uh, and uh, the purpose was to strengthen the sense of cultural distinction among the parishioners. So, um, 
also uh, through the effort of the workers of the diocese uh, and volunteers, a census has been uh, conducted. Uh, uh, the purpose of the census was twofold, uh, to gather information about the parishioners and uh, also to uh, create the information network for those uh, who provided uh, their context. Uh, so, um, another important uh, uh, intro uh, new development was uh, changes in language practices. Uh, naturally, Armenian has always been uh, the language of the church service, but uh, in the later years, the priests uh, began to hold weekly spirituality classes in Armenian and not uh, in Russian, as um, as they used to several years ago. So uh, remarkably, all those changes took place after uh, the new head uh, of the diocese uh, was appointed. Uh, it needs to be underscored that uh, though uh, the official stance of the Armenian church um, um, is uh, that uh, Armenians in Belisi are part of uh, the diaspora. Um, local pri local born priests uh, uh, do not uh, share this opinion. Uh, on the screen you can see uh, a quote from uh, an interview with a local priest. So the uh, effort spent by the priests and workers at the Cultural Center on diaspora identity construction among Armenians in Belize is met, uh, met with mixed feelings. Uh, it is among church goes and visitors at the Cultural Center that one can hear that Armenians in Belize constitute uh, a diaspora, though the number of Armenians who self-identify uh, in that way uh, is not large. Uh, and uh, while agreeing uh, that uh, um, a cultural uh, connection uh, has to be uh, preserved. Uh, uh, many Armenians uh, um, who also agree that uh, the Armenian language is of uh, crucial uh, importance on the discursive level, uh, this, uh, their stance does not influence their language practices uh, uh, and uh, Police Armenians oppose the monolingual linguistic ideology and turn to multilingualism, that is switching between Armenian, Russian, and Georgian in the course of one conversation to mark the distinction between themselves and both the priests who come from Armenia and uh, the Georgians. Uh, so. Um, the invisible boundary uh, between those performing new diaspora identity and the rest of Armenians in Belize uh, became uh, particularly visible um, in uh, April uh, 2016 when uh, the commemoration of uh, the victims of the Armenian genocide coincided with the Orthodox Palm Sunday. Uh, on the, uh, this picture, uh, you can see uh, this picture was taken right in front of the Armenian church. Uh, so on the uh, foreground, you see uh, people with uh, uh, carrying a pussy willow coming to church to celebrate the religious feast. and. Uh, on the background, you can see Armenian uh, flags. Uh, this was uh, a small rally uh, held um, uh, in support of the uh, recognition of the Armenian uh, genocide. Uh, so uh, we can see uh, two groups of Armenians, uh, one assuming this new diasporic identity. This is uh, uh, a smaller group. And we see another group uh, who is much larger and uh, who's more um, um, uh, who's more inclined to adhere to uh, the local tradition, uh, and thus we see two understandings of Armenianness: the official understanding coming uh, from the Armenian state and uh, local ethnic entrepreneurs, uh, uh, which is rooted in uh, the uh, religion belonging to the Armenian Apostolic Church and the Armenian language. But on the other hand, uh, we see. Uh, the large uh, amount of people who adhere to the local tradition. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.